Joining us here from the Cattle Industry Convention in New Orleans is Kevin Good with Cattle Facts. And let's talk about the supply shock, first of all, supply shock that we have seen mm. in the industry. Uh, it was confirmed in the cattle inventory report this week, but how much tighter are we going to get with supplies in 23? Yeah, it's a good question. To start with, you know, we look at last year as our record high supplies because of the liquidation we've seen, massive cow kill, as well as pulling cattle forward because of drought. We're forecasting about a 5% drop in production this year compared to last year. That would equate to about an 800,000 head drop in fed slaughter and about 800,000 head drop in non-fed slaughter as well. So what is that gonna mean for prices? Talk about your average price outlook and you know, are we gonna exceed some of these records yeah, set yeah. previously? Yeah, just as a backdrop there, we've got sharply higher prices forecast for this year, particularly for live cattle and feeders and calves. But if you look at the demand side, particularly if you look at retail prices, we've only got them going up 1% this year. We've kind of pushed the envelope quite a bit the last couple of years. On wholesale, the cutout, we'd have them going up 4%. We've got fed values going up 10%. So you can see that the margin shift is taking place with more of those retailers' dollars trickling back down to the producer. And a 10% increase in fed prices would be a 158 average. On yearlings, eight weights in particular, as we go through the year, we see them moving higher as we get into second half of the year in particular, into new crop corn that should be substantially cheaper than it has been this last two years. If that's the case, 195 annual average for an eight weight translates to about a 225 annual average for a five and a half weight steer calf. So talk about profitability mm, though, because yeah. we still need to get more profitability absolutely. down to the cow-calf yeah. sector, right? Yep, absolutely, and the, the challenge that we've had obviously has been mother nature the last couple of years, and it's been inflation this last year. So if you're in a location that you don't have the feed, and you had to buy winter feed to get the cow through the winter, uh, boy, you've got an extra two to $300 bill on the cow. And so calf values have to move higher, not only for this year, over the next couple of years to recoup some of that added expense. It's just not feed, obviously. Energy's been a lot higher. Labor costs and availability, and then interest rates have been, the increase we've had there has been huge as far as affecting the bottom line. And until we see that, it's pretty hard to rebuild this herd, right? You know, we've got to have grass to do it. We've got to mm -hmm. have feed. So that's number one. It does look like, with Matt Macon's forecast, that we are transitioning out of the drought that we've been in for the last three years into something that's better, whether that's neutral or wet pattern by the second half of the year, that's still up in the air, but it is into something better. And so as we go through this year, I do think we'll see cow slaughter drop, which we're forecasting, and then by the second half of the year, this year's calf crop, more of these heifers more than likely will be ret retained. So it still means we're liquidating for this year, but starting to build a base as we go into 24, 25, and 6, we're starting to get some expansion. Yeah, because we haven't really seen much heifer retention at all, mm, have we? Zero, zero. You know, your, your heifers on feed basically are close to 40%, which is the highest percentage it's been since 2000, 2001. So, no, the die is cast on the heifer side that we are liquidating at least through the first half of this year. So, how long do these record high prices last? Mm. How long is the tail, Kevin? It's, it's going to be rather long looking at the supply side. Obviously, do we have a demand shock or something from the outside? But if you just look at the supply side, our tightest supply is probably is out there in 2026. So we still have a period in here where you're just going to get tighter and tighter as you go from here forward. Particular, you get into 25 and 26, cow slaughter drops from a million and a quarter to a million and a half head from the peak. You'll have a fed slaughter that, that drops from the peak of two and a half million, so that's a four million head change. And at the same time, you start to keep those heifers back that makes it even tighter. Let's talk about the consumption mm -hmm. side then. What yeah. happens to demand with these higher prices? Yeah. It, if you think about demand in the rearview mirror, it's been exceptional. You know, demand over the last 20 years, the price of beef retail has gone up at a 4.5% annual pace since 2000. Same time, inflation was 2.15 until this past year. So more real dollars in the system and the dollar growth for beef was more than the dollar growth for both pork and chicken combined in that 20 year period. So demand has been stout. There is plenty of dollars in the system. Supplies this past year on a per capita base, I've mentioned that it was record beef production. Mm -hmm. If you divide that by the population, you, you account for imports and exports. We had the most beef per capita on the, our market that we've had since 2010. Despite that, we had record high retail prices. 
So that's a good message as far as beef demand is exceptionally strong. And those consumers are chasing the choice. Absolutely, we had record wide choice select and prime choice spreads last year. Our customers, as we think about them, if you looked at demand since 2000, all the growth has been in choice, top two thirds choice and prime. Select demand's flat. And so as we produce more of the good stuff, so to speak, hey, we've been rewarded as an industry with wider premiums. What are the implications for export demand as well? Exports have been a very bright picture for us in 2022. We had record tonnage and record value. And in fact, last year, when you roll the value of beef, variety meats and hides together, it represented about 23% of the value of a fed steer heifer was exported, record high. And so, good story in the rearview mirror, led by very big increases into China, and also very good numbers continuing to Japan and South Korea, our number one and number two destinations. For this year, we would suggest with tighter supplies and higher prices, a little bit of a headwind. We still see improvements going into China again, probably flatter, maybe a tick down in, into Japan and South Korea. Let's remember we compete with Australia into those markets, and Australia has built their herd back up after years of drought, so that'll be a little bit more global competition. So this year, we're suggesting that our exports will be down about 3%, but the dollar value should be another record. So we talked about profitability, but let's talk about it in respect to the fact that, you know, two years ago mm -hmm. we had packers making record profit mm -hmm. margins. Where is the value in that chain yeah. now or the profitability in the chain? Has yeah. it shifted? Oh, it absolutely has. Last year was huge. If we look at the percentage of the Fed value compared to wholesale or the cutout, and you, you take out the drop credits to equalize that, we went from 40% to 40% in 2021, was what the cattle feeder was receiving, to 50% last year. And this year we've got that forecast to go to 53%. So we're getting back to a spot where we're starting to squeeze a lot of, bit of that margin out of the packing segment. They're still gonna make money this year, but their margins will get tighter, supplies gets tighter over the next couple of years. One thing that will happen in our opinion as supplies get tighter, they'll be able to squeeze more margin out of those record retail dollars. So there'll be more dollars trickling through wholesale backed into the cattle producers' hands. Is there any concern about excess of shackle space though? Oh, obviously in, in, in that world, you know, it, it's, we think about all the new shackles that are gonna be built over the next two to three right. years. Timing's not the best, but at the same time, that's also incentive from an industry standpoint that, hey, we need to turn this herd around and there is going to be the, the uh, brick and mortar, so to speak, to utilize if we can build the herd and have a bigger herd. But short term, that segment will make less and the cattle producer and therefore all the way through the system, live prices will be rewarded with that. Thanks so much for joining us. Always a pleasure. Kevin Good with Cattle Facts.